Alrighty, so we are taking a look at a rule that is aptly named the quotient rule because we need a rule for taking the derivative of one function over another. And that could be really a variety of things. So what we'll do is we'll just start off by at least exploring what the rule looks like and then we can do a couple examples. So in order to take the derivative of a quotient, and again we have to recognize one function over another, it's going to, I'll show you the harder notation first and then we'll, we'll talk about an easier way to do it. It's going to involve a, a clever combination of some functions and their derivatives. So you'll actually have, let's say, g of x times the derivative of f and then minus and watch this flip-flop now. We'll say f times the derivative of g. So it's kind of like a little swap there. But all of that is then over the denominator squared. So that seems like a lot of things going on. So let me give you a nice little easy way to remember this, right? So another way to say the quotient rule is if we look at this as a high function and a low function, so top and bottom, right? You can kind of say to yourself, well, it's the low d high, so low d high, so you see I'm just trying to kind of color the this, color code this a little bit, right? Low d high minus high and then d low. And all of that right, is over low squared. Okay, so say it with me, right? It's low d high minus high d low over low squared. Now again, you look at that and you're like, well, what does that even mean, right? So the d, every time I say d, that stands for derivative. So we're taking the low, the bottom function, multiplying it times the derivative of the top function, subtracting the top function times the derivative of the bottom function all over the bottom squared. So write this down, have this handy, because we're going to use this in every example we talk about here. Okay, so first example, right? We have this, this high function, this low function, right? If you want to look at it as f over g, you could do that, whichever, whichever you want. So the way this works is the low times the derivative of the high. So in this case, it would be the derivative of x squared plus 1, and that's just 2x. Then we subtract and we say, all right, now high, or x squared plus 1, right, times the derivative of the low. Now, the derivative of x is really just 1, because that's like 1x, and the minus 3 drops out. And all of that is then over low squared. So there is your derivative. Now, in cases like this, you could simplify just a little bit, and so we're going to do that here. You could actually distribute and make it 2x squared, right, minus 6x, minus x squared, minus 1, all over the bottom. You don't really need to expand the bottom. It doesn't really do much for you, right? And so you could also say, if we combine like terms up top, that this is your final answer as well. So... Again, right now it's not about the algebra as much as it is about the calculus, and that's right here. So there's the quotient rule. You have now done the derivative. Could you also express it like this? Yes, you could. So obviously one example is not enough, right? So let's do a couple more. So this one looks kind of crazy because you got some radicals in there. So your best friend when you start this problem would be to actually rewrite this. So how about we rewrite the top as x to the two-thirds power? That's going to make our lives a lot easier. Okay, so now to get the derivative, f prime, right, that's what they asked, we can get, execute our quotient rule, right? So low, there it is, times d high. So the derivative of this, this is the power rule, right? So we bring the power down, and we reduce the power, so 2 thirds minus 1 is negative 1 third, minus, and then we flip-flop, right? So high so x to the two-thirds, there it is, d low. And that would just be 3, all over low squared. Now, for this problem, I'm actually not going to simplify. And the reason is because 
this power right here, this this uh, negative one third power, that really throws kind of a wrench into the plans here. I mean, we could give it a shot. We could probably distribute again. I, we'll have some like terms, but I don't know if it really gets us anywhere. So, just an example of what something would look like if we didn't distribute and simplify. So, let's try one more. Now, this one I picked on purpose because there's something interesting going on. So, I want to show you two different ways to go about the same problem. Okay, let's start with our traditional quotient rule, right? So we have low d high, so there you go, minus high d low, boom, all over low squared. So let's Now they asked us to, to find g prime of 2, so before I do that, why don't I clean up a little bit? So 6x squared plus x minus 3x squared minus x, all over x squared, right? Clean up a little bit more. You have 3x squared. The x's cancel. This is good, right? Over x squared, and lo and behold, you get 3. So even if you asked me to do g prime of 2, it would have to be 3 because there's nothing, there's nowhere to plug in 2. But let me show you something else that you want to be aware of when you do things like the quotient rule. If we had just started the problem just a little bit differently, if I had maybe written this, watch this. See what I did here? It's a little dangerous to kind of talk about this because I'm only allowed to split this up because there's only one thing in the bottom, no pluses or minuses. So watch this, still simplifying a little bit. You notice I get 3x plus 1. Well, now if I go to find the derivative of this, it's just 3. And so again, g prime of 2 can't be anything other than 3. So w why am I showing you this? Only because if you recognize an easier way, you should take it. The quotient rule is kind of cumbersome. There's a lot going on there. So if you don't have to do it, why bother, right? So look for these opportunities as you're practicing, as you're doing some homework, and as we go through the next couple of days, because you could save yourself a lot of aggravation if you catch something like this. Okay, so now what I would do is go in back into your notes, go to the quotient rule practice, get together with your group, see if there's anything you guys have to discuss, and then we'll pull it all together when we get back together as a class.